Hey guys, uh, my name is Craig. I'm one of the KZN Olympus ambassadors in South Africa and I'm just doing this quick tutorial and I thought it might be interesting for some of you especially that have just bought your cameras. I know a lot of you have had yours for a while and honestly you guys have inspired me to get one. So this is for the guys that need to know how to get the most out of the Olympus cameras. Now firstly I'm shooting with the EM10 Mark II so the video is being shot with the EM10 um, Mark II so I'm keeping it in the family and we are filming the EM1 this is my baby so you can see that's the EM1 in its absolute beauty you can see it's been through wear and tear it's had its day so it's still my favorite Okay, so basically the uh, history behind this is I wouldn't say I've been having trouble with Lightroom and Photoshop but I'm a Lightroom and Photoshop artist and retoucher and I've just found that I'm not getting the most out of my raw images on Lightroom. I wasn't really happy with them um, and I, I was pretty sure it was in camera so and I loaded all the latest updates and everything like that but you know what, I, they were working for me. Until I ran across this, this tutorial on YouTube and how to use the Olympus Viewer software. And this software is powerful. These cameras are powerful. And if you use them together, you're going to get the most out. You see, coming from Nikon, I know with the lower range cameras, you've got software, the Nikon software, which you could edit and retouch. But I just didn't find it to be very powerful. Then, when I moved up in the Nikon brands, you know, they didn't give you the software. And why? Because they know you've got Lightroom and Photoshop. And they know Lightroom and Photoshop is geared towards their products. They have all the updates. They have everything to get the most out of their raw files. Now, I found that Olympus's um, profile on Lightroom isn't that strong. And the raw images, it's, it's just not using them to the best ability. So, you know, that's what got me thinking. And then when I saw this tutorial, I'm like, no, wait, we've got to be able to get more out of this. And you can, trust me. So I'm just going to quickly run through the camera settings because now with using the software in combination, I generally try and keep all my settings standard. There's just one or two tweaks that I play with and I'll just quickly go through them now with you. And you can see one thing I, I like to do is my custom white balance. I like to keep it custom. If I'm shooting at a wedding ceremony or um, the family shots and things, I usually like to keep my, my white balance as auto and then I can always pull it in, in the Olympus software and sort it out there. But then when I'm shooting the creative shoot and the reception, I generally change my, my white balance depending on the lighting and what type of effects I want. So that generally is one of the changes. The other one is I keep um, my picture mode into natural. It goes my phone. I keep it natural everything else is set the same and you can see my facial recognitions off I'm shooting an srgb I am in full matrix metering mode and I'm shooting in raw you have to shoot in raw to make the most out of this and let's just quickly go through some of the menu settings here and you can see here AF I've turned full AF off and I've set up my AEL and AFL to back button focus. So if you go in there, you go into single mode and you choose mode 3, you can get back button focus where you push the AEL button and you actually can focus there and then just shoot your shutter straight from there. It's a very handy technique and if any of you guys have um, heard about the Brennauser technique, that is very handy to have your back button focus and if you haven't heard about it go look at it Brennauser it's fantastic uh, anyway leave all the settings as as came out of, out of the box I usually keep my clutch operative I like to switch sometimes between manual and auto if I want some creative shots and button function oh guys you have to play with this you really have to go in here and play with this. You go into your button function and you can program your buttons to do different things. So depending on your style and depending on what you shoot, you know what you need to play with this. Now I like 
a lot of HDR shots. I love um, playing with external lights and adding in light. And the one reason I love this camera is because of the RC mode in it. So you got to you got to really play with this camera. Now I shoot a lot of low light shooting as well, which I love. And this camera is enormously powerful when it comes to low light. I do love it. So I've set my function one button to peaking and function two is just natural, AL is just the same, function one, the two function buttons at the front of the camera, I'll show you those two buttons there, I've set them up as my function two and my function three, and that I've set up as HDR one and one RC mode because I love my flashes off camera, and then I don't use the hand bracket. I love the size of the camera. I love the weight of the camera. It just feels good. So I don't use the extended battery. But I, I got one just in case I'm gonna be away from my camera bag for a while. So I need to carry extra batteries. So button function you have to play with. Everything else I kind of just leave as comes off camera. Uh, image stabilization I turn off. Okay, all still straight out of camera. Live view boost, I turn off. I like to see my settings change. So that's another thing I change. And sleep, oh wait. You gotta turn that as high as you can sometimes. Uh, I know it drains a little bit of battery, but sometimes you just, you need your camera to be on for to capture that action. If you're shooting weddings, okay, I shoot weddings a lot. So you need your camera to be on all the time and not in sleep mode because it takes one two seconds and you've missed that shot so waking your camera up uh, I try and keep it on as high as I can and then auto power off four hours so yeah you know if I'm not touching it for four hours it, it should go off um, everything else noise reduction I've turned off you can see noise reduction I've turned off totally off I let the software sort that out and then everything is basically off camera. So those are basically the settings. And also one thing to remember is edit your file name, change it to what you need to. You know, it's nice to have custom little names for your uh, photos. Also, one thing a lot of guys don't do and you guys need to do this is put your copyright settings in. You need to have it in there. You need to have it imported into every single image. It needs to be on it. So make sure that is there so that if your photo goes anywhere, your data is on your photo. And last couple of settings. That's basically all just standard. I really don't change much. And that's it. So those are kind of the settings that I use on camera and this is giving me the best results at the moment and obviously depending on your style depending on what you want to do you might want to play with some of these settings and change them and customize them to yourself and play with them the nice thing is you can go back into the software and you can change it it's beautiful so you can alter it and if you're shooting on art modes and everything like that that gives some amazing amazing effects what's beautiful is if you're shooting in RAW it gives you a JPEG and RAW and only the Olympus viewer will show you both those. When you pull it into Lightroom, it doesn't show you those. So you've lost it. Well, it's actually still in your file, but it's not showing you on Lightroom. So you don't see it. So let's move over to the software now, and we'll show you how we, well, I'll show you how we get the most out of that.